Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from Skill Builder, and I'm going to take you through the installation procedure for this Kingspan Albion Ultra Steel Unvented Hot Water Cylinder. Now, unvented cylinders are very popular these days. In fact, they've been used all over the world. You see them on the continent, you see them in America, everywhere else. It seems that the British are very late coming to the party, but they really are starting to catch on in a big way. Because they give you mains pressure, provided you've got good mains pressure coming into the house and flow rate, you will get good pressure from your showers. You'll be able to run a couple of showers at the same time, and you don't need any pumps. It also means you don't need plumbing in the loft, you don't have to have pipes in the loft and tanks in the loft which may freeze up. Also if you're having a loft conversion you can free up all that space. Now they have advantages over combi boilers which deliver the heat instantly because they're storing the heat it means you've got this 210 litres capacity here in this particular case you can get different sizes of course but 210 litres of hot water there ready for you to use if you've got a busy household you want to be running two showers at the same time everybody wants to use those showers at the same time in the morning then this is the way to go now there's a few things you need to check first of all when you're putting the cylinder in you need to make sure that the floor is strong enough we've got 210 litres here which equates to 210 kilograms plus the weight of the cylinder. Now I've already checked this floor, it's a good plywood floor, the joists are good, and so I know that we can put it on there. But if you were putting this in a loft, for example, you want to make sure that it was well supported over a supporting wall. Don't take any chances, make sure you do the job properly, and then you won't have any surprises. Having established that the floor is strong enough to take this 210 kilos of water plus the cylinder, I then want to find out if it's level. In other words, if this cylinder is going to fit upright. So the way I'll do that, I've checked the floor already, but let's just put the level on the cylinder and we can see that that is pretty upright actually. That's nice. I'm going to check it that way and it's very, very slightly out there. And I can just shim that up if I need to, but it's probably going to be all right to leave it there. I just check that because it's nothing worse than see a cylinder that's leaning over like the leaning tower of Pisa. Just doesn't look good. And you can chalk it up. You can put this on bearers just to level it up. The other thing you might be wondering is why I've chosen such a tall cylinder. I mean, there's room in this, in this cupboard here for something a little bit lower. We could put some shelves over the top for some linen, that kind of thing. Well, the reason I've chosen this one is because this is situated in a cellar, in fact, a half cellar. So I need to get the pressure relief and thermal temperature relief runoff, drain off, if you like, from these valves out to the outside. And if I had a smaller cylinder, this here, which is the pressure temperature relief valve, would be lower down on the cylinder. So by the time I'd got my 300 millimeters of vertical pipe underneath the tun dish, which you'll see in a minute, I would then be lower and I probably would be running out of space to get that out. I had a look in the Kingspan catalog and I thought, okay, this is ideal. We can get this in. There's enough room ceiling height wise, and it means we've got a nice high pressure relief there, which we can bring down across the wall and then we've got the perfect situation. We, we, we need to get it out. We've got about just under a meter above the floor level to the outside. So we'll be able to do it and uh, it's just gonna make the job a lot easier. That is always a problem if you're in cellars is how to get this out. And in some cases I've seen people have had to pump it. They've had to put it down into a drain on the floor and then pump it out from there. So this way it solved the problem. So here we've got the pressure governor, the regulator, that keeps it down to three bar. We've got the pressure relief valve here in case that fails. We've got a non-return valve in here to stop anything coming back and contaminating the water. We've also got a balanced cold water outlet here, which we can use if we want to equalize the supplies, the hot and cold supplies on shower valves and so on. Now, it helps if you can get this positioned above the cylinder. And the reason for that is that if you take it above the flood level, if you turn off your 
isolating valve here, it means that you can service this whole assembly, you can take it off and service it without having to drain the cylinder. Now I had a little bit of a change of plan. Originally I did an offset there and I put that valve higher, which is better, but I didn't like it because it was hanging around in fresh air. The trouble is I've got all this pipe work here. I don't want to move all that. So what I've done is I've lowered it slightly, but it's still just about above the height of this pressure and temperature relief valve. So if the service engineer comes, if it's me or anybody else, and you come to change this assembly or whatever, you can just drain it down through here and it lower that to there. So there'll only be that tiny, tiny little bit of water in there. So you, you can drain a bit out the cylinder, drain a bucket full out the cylinder and you're away with it. But it's just one of those things. Ideally, I would have had it above the top of the cylinder, but there you go. Now, so far I've managed to make up all the soldering in a remote position on the floor away from the valve but at this point I'm going to solder this elbow and it's close to this pressure reducing valve and this pressure relief valve and there's also a non-return valve in there which is plastic. To save that overheating I just wrap that up in a, a damp cloth and that will keep it cool while I solder that joint. this is the drain off valve I always dismantle these it's important to do that because you've got rubber inside there you've also got the rubber o-ring so you don't want that in contact with the heat if you try to solder with that in place then you might find you've got a leak on that so just take that off until we're finished So that's it, it's my final connection made, except for the fact that I've still got to put a blanking disc in the back of this pressure reducing valve here, which is where you put your balanced cold supply. Now I'm not using a balanced cold supply because it's a long way from this cellar up to the bathroom to where I would need it. And it's an old house and honestly, it'd be a nightmare running all that pipe work up there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try it as it is and I'm going to put a non-return valve on the outlet of this cylinder so that nothing can come and pressure it backwards. Now the reason you do that is because modern taps, a lot of modern taps have got no separation between them. So if the hot comes in and we're talking about shower valves and mixer taps, anything like that, as the cold comes in, if the cold is at a greater pressure than the hot, and remember this is three bar maximum because it's reduced on the pressure governor. So if the cold's coming in faster or more, at more pressure than the hot, it will have a tendency to want to push that hot back down the pipe. Now, the problem there is that with an unvented cylinder, you can get that cold mains pushing back down the hot pipe and it will over pressure this cylinder it will put this pressure up above three bar which means that this valve will let by it will suddenly open and you'll get water coming through it may only be occasionally you may just hear it where it just lets a little bit out but it shouldn't happen so if i put that non-return valve on the top of this cylinder that stops that ever happening and if i find that the performance of a shower valve is a little bit erratic what I can do is I can put a pressure reducing valve on the cold supply to the bathroom I do that up in the loft and then I can balance it to three bars so that it never exceeds this which might actually be the easiest way of doing it we've got our expansion vessel mounted on the wall now when I mounted it, it's got lovely brackets on the back for mounting it it means we've got a nice solid connection there and this is all nicely supported the pipework. Flow and return, going down into the coil. Down here, and we've got a drain off here at the lowest point so that we can drain anything out of that, that coil. When we turn the isolating valves off, off at the top, we've only got to drain a little bit of water out, which is great. 
because this is in a cellar, draining water out is always gonna be a bit of a mission. So we've got a coil in here, and that coil is kind of in the bottom section, which is where the cylinder is coldest, so it's at its most efficient. Now, what I don't know is the way this coil is configured inside here, and I tried to look on the instructions, tried to look on the drawings to see if I could see the arrangement of coil in there. And the reason that matters is because if that is the high point of the coil, that will be airlocked in, in that point there. Because I've run that pipe downwards and away, if I'd run that pipe up and across there, it would not have airlocked. The whole coil would have been vented. That one is level, so the air would go out of that and carry on up to the system. I'm not over worried because what I can do is just crack that nut open slightly, take any air out of there, and because it's got a long way to travel downwards, the air won't be forced down into the coil. So we'd be okay, but it just would have been nice if I'd known which way round that was in terms of the configuration of the coil inside. I almost thought of getting a torch and looking down inside and trying to see it, but anyway, it's gonna work. And the reason I've done this is it, it's nice and tidy having that going down there. And obviously I've got to miss this immersion heater because these are special, by the way. They're not ordinary ones for unvented cylinders. They've got a special thermal cutout on them. You have to fit the right one. We didn't want the pipe running across the front of the immersion obviously it's you've got to have that so it can be removed at any time in the future this is where we're going to put the thermostat in there that's the dry pocket now the secondary return is actually quite good in a house of this size the water goes out through the the top of the cylinder and it circulates around the pipe work and you get it in hotels and places like that and you would put that on a timer that pump you've got a little bronze pump here and you put it on a timer so that when you get up in the morning, the water's circulating around the pipe. So wherever you turn a tap on, a hot tap on in the house, you don't have to wait for that water to come through. You can just go straight into the shower, turn it on and use it. The only trouble is that they're a bit wasteful because you've got that hot water just circulating around the pipes around the house. So you would need to insulate the pipes to get this to be really effective you want to insulate all that pipe wood which we can't do because it's all buried under floorboard and a lot of it is historical so that's the reason i just cap off the secondary return there if you don't cap that off you have water pouring out of there so that's important the next thing we've got here is the temperature and pressure relief valve if there's an excess pressure if for some reason this pressure reducing valve has failed and it hasn't blown off on the top on the pressure relief valve, then it's got a second chance to do it here. But what it's also got in there is a temperature sensor so that if this cylinder overheats, and we're talking about keeping it just below boiling, so it'd be very, very hot if that happened. If that cylinder overheated, that temperature relief valve would open and it would send very, very hot water down through here into here. Now that, is also twinned as you can see because we've got the cold water pressure relief valve going into it as well down there so those two t into there so whichever one of those is blowing off you'll know that there's, because there'll be water coming out of there so if you're at the household when you see water even water dripping down there is a sign that something's wrong and it needs servicing so that's why they have what they call a ton dish there so that water can drop straight down into that dish this is a very important point because that is open to the atmosphere so that you can see it and also because the outlet pipe could in theory freeze at some time if you got covered in snow or ice or whatever so you you don't want that blocked up so in that case this would over overflow so we know that we've got no pressure on that cylinder it's going to escape one way or another it's going to escape so what we do there is we've got 15 millimeter pipe and because we're now going through into the tundish. We don't want a 15 millimeter pipe coming out of the bottom because there would be a tendency for that to overflow. So we go one size larger, we go up to 22 millimeters on the outlet of the tundish. And that's made, that's a plastic device that they, they supply with the cylinder. So you fit that and this is important because this drop here has to be a minimum of 300 millimeters or a foot in old money. The reason for that is if you put a bend in too soon, you've built up a resistance. So if you've got water pouring down into that tundish and it can't 
get away really fast with a bit of a, a, a downward drop, there's a tendency for it to splatter up and, and overflow there. So it's very important that you get at least 300 millimeters of drop there. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, that's the reason why we went for the tall cylinder because we've got to get out into the atmosphere outside to a safe place to terminate. And we only had just about three feet or just a meter say to do it. So I knew that we had to be out of there before the three foot height, but we also need to have a fall on the pipe all the way to the outside. So I managed to get the 300 millimeters and you can see I've put an easy bend on this. I haven't put an elbow on it. I've got a nice sweep on that bend. So that's all the devices that we've got on this cylinder, the safety devices to make sure that it doesn't malfunction. And these cylinders are really good. I mean, they've got a fantastic safety record. So the other thing that they've got on it is you also have a motorized valve on the flow from the boiler, which is controlled by a thermal cutout here on the cylinder. So we have a cylinder which has got a temperature sensor where so we can adjust the temperature of the hot water in the cylinder but we also have a thermal cutout so that if it exceeds that temperature, it stops the water coming from the boiler. So if there was a malfunction in the boiler, the boiler thermostat that failed, say, and that's unlikely these days because they've also got a safety cutout device on them. But if that did happen and the water was coming through very hot from the boiler, it couldn't get any further because this temperature sensor, which we're gonna fit in a minute, would tell it that it's got to, got to shut down, it's got to close off. So that would shut that valve off. So that's absolutely fantastic. This angle of this boss up here was coming out a little bit down, a little bit cocked on. I didn't want to bend that to make that straight because that would again invalidate the warranty. So we're going to leave that well alone. So I've just put a tiny little kick in the pipe there just to bring it out. To stop it springing in, I've put that bracket there, but that bracket is not actually screwed into the cylinder. So all I'm going to do with this, got a little bit of self-adhesive tape. I use a really good one from Everbuild, double-sided tape that just goes on there. I'll stick that on the back. If you want to know how I went about changing over from the vented system, cutting the pipes off in the loft and redirecting them, we'll put that up as a separate video if you're interested in how that works, how we change over from having vented cylinder, fed off a tank, you know, low pressure system to this high pressure system. Now, the important thing is here is that because we fitted a new bathroom in this house and there's a video on that or several videos on that for you to look at as well, because we've done that, we're using modern fittings. Now, modern fittings, a lot of them, for shower valves, taps, everything, are designed to work on high pressure systems. They don't work on low pressure systems. So when you open them up, a basin tap, you just get a miserable little dribble out if you're running off a, a tank fed system. So that's one of the reasons that we changed over to the unvented, but the other reason was that we could do away with the pumps and everything else. And a lot of people would say it's a lot more hygienic because if you have a look at the tank in the loft and you look at the state of that, no lid on it, it's been there for years and years and years and it is terrible. That concludes this video on fitting the Kingspan Ultra Steel Cylinder. Don't forget they do different sizes, different shapes. If you've got a loft conversion and you want a cylinder, you can pop one in that eaves cupboard, which is absolutely brilliant. And you can also get solar cylinders. So if you want to know more about the Kingspan range of unvented cylinders, have a look at their website. I've got to say, I enjoyed fitting this, it was great. Now I'm going to enjoy going upstairs, having a look at the shower valves and everything else and seeing just how much more pressure they've got because that really is the bit where it delights the customer. Thanks for watching that. Do come back and see us soon. We've got loads more on YouTube. And don't forget, have a look at our other videos. We've got lots and lots of videos, over 200 videos on our Skill Builder channel now. So have a look at them.